Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Blake and Sales Show with Mark. For over 10 years, dominating the podcast world. Now sit back, relax, and get ready to have some fun. Let's welcome your hosts, Blake, Sal, and Mark. Hello and welcome to the Blake Show with Mark, episode number 499. Oh, that's weird to say. I am one of your hosts, Blake. Let me bring on my co-host. First of all, the biggest film podcasting. The man who, I, I actually, I'm really, I, I love his shirt today. The Sting Street Fighter shirt today. I'm loving it. Sal, how you doing? Mm-hmm. I'm doing wonderful. Here's a yeah, nice for little... video side, yeah, for the video side. <laughs> a little close up there. Yeah, there you go. Very cool. And um, I, I, I always have to give a little bit of shit. Uh, but other co, the man, the myth, the legend, the man who for about oh, it looks like he's on the phone actually. So I can't even. I don't know if he's even going to hear me. But the man, the myth, the legend, the um, the guy who a year ago we go and say we need a new vacuum cleaner in this house because it isn't working. And then suddenly because he's doing work cleaning around the house because I'm not able to. So he says, I think we need a new vacuum. <laughs> 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 Mark, you will be here in a minute because he, he must have got a phone call during the introductions. That's fine. Uh, I'll stare at my big brother mug while we wait. Oh, look at you with the big brother mug. Look at you. All fancy. <laughs> so, well, actually, while we're waiting, what's the introduction we're playing here? Uh, we are playing uh, the theme to no other than the thing. Yes. Not even exaggerating. The longest running, greatest Colorado champion of all time. Like, that's right. Let's just be honest here. Like, it really is not, nobody like him. Like, let's be honest here. That's right. So, and by the way, I, I don't know if you didn't see Raw this week. The um, the promo between him and Sammy was fantastic because um, Gunther's is being like, you can't beat me. So, fine. <laughs> and then, like, I loved it. He was so confident. It was a great moment. Like, I'm being a confident asshole. Great. Sammy's like, I could beat you. Look into my eyes. I could beat you. And then in the background, this weird, like, Chad Gable thing. Where it's like Chad Gable telling Sammy, you can't beat Gunther, based on how you wrestle. Okay. So I'm like, okay, that little element here. So, okay. well, we'll get more into wrestling stuff in a few. We'll get some plugs out of the way. First of all, I know I am available right now. Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and our account publishing, available in English and in Spanish. And go eventually. I don't know when they're going to get around to it, but eventually they'll be back. The Andy and Andy show available on all podcasting platforms. More importantly, Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, we will be live. At 12 noon Central Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Time for our 500th show and our 11th anniversary show. Um, I have some stuff planned. I, I, I'm, I got to work on some stuff. I have the time, too. So it's not like I don't have the time. It's just I have to right. actually like draw out what I want to do. I have ideas. In my, the problem is I have ideas in my brain. It's just actually, you know, writing well, them out, dangerous. actually doing them. You know what I mean? It's like actually making them work. You know what I mean? On paper. Does that make sense? That's, yeah. da- that's dangerous. <laughs> yeah, like, but you know what I mean? Though? Like, you know how sometimes I have a game idea, but then it's actually, you know, making it a podcast game. Then just yes. like something you see on TikTok, it's one of those things. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so, all right. Looks like he's off the phone. Let's actually do a proper introduction for the man, the myth, the legend. Mark Dad, how you doing? Doing great. Hit the pop. Here's the funny part is, okay, so this is the Zoom problem. Nothing to do with that. He screams so loud, the Zoom line cut him off, but I can hear him in the next room. 
that was a <laughs> so I have no clue who actually heard that scream, but like I heard it in the next room. That was very funny. <laughs> 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 oh my god. So that was very funny because Zoom we were so loud that Zoom cut you off. <laughs> that was that was hysterical. <laughs> Fuck you, Zoom. Oh man, that was really great. Um the scream heard across the room. <laughs> So, all right. Um, let's actually get right into things. We're not going to spend a whole lot of bullshit time today. And I, and I told them, as I was saying, bullshit time. Well, here's the thing. And let me be honest with people. We're okay, not. Go ahead. Let me tell people. They have kind of real. <laughs> okay. Yeah, in years past, we have sat here and we'll break down all the detail stuff that happened in all the WWE programming around the main season. Mm-hmm. Last year, we went away with that. We went away from that, and we're like, okay, when WrestleMania we come, we'll get into all the storylines. We'll do that again this year because then we don't have to sit here for two hours and go off for supper. We're going to go over again in two weeks. <laughs> There's just no point. <laughs> but as we will be talking some WrestleMania stuff later, I have some clips and some fun stuff we can go through. But we're not going to go through every little detail. Before we get into all that, it's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> because people have actually been pretty nice to us or just not commented at all. Like, this is one of those things. Like, some people are using the attitude of you don't have something nice to say, don't say anything. Well, last week, last week, um, Sal went on this whole tangent about Cody Rhodes, like he does. <laughs> 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 he does. And I had to put the clip up. Fuck Cody Rhodes. Of, um, Sal just being, just being a great heel, great heel moment, saying that he wants to see Cody get injured in a ring. It, it, it made me laugh. So I'm like, I have to include the clip. It wasn't even on the Blake Sal side. It was on my personal TikTok and on my personal social media. Because it just made <laughs> me laugh. You know what I mean? So I put this clip up. Put this clip up. And all of a sudden, I get some notifications from comments. I'm like, oh, yay, material for the show. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's because we say, hey, leave a comment or a voicemail or whatever, and now you got something. So the first thing comes up, and I, I kept this up on my, on my TikTok because it made me chuckle because it was so stupid. This is the comment that was, I can smell these three BOs through the phone. I almost threw up. Really? That's the best you got. That's the best you got. <laughs> well, what I, are you? What, what are you? What me, are you like? Five? Well, let me tell you something, brother. Brother, <laughs> Mister, I don't have a picture because I'm so fugly. Oh. <laughs> I bet your bo. Rich? I bet your bo is worse than a garbage truck on a hot summer day. <laughs> you you have to understand this person. Rich basically thinks that when he has B.O., it's like an aphrodisiac, like Musk. Oh, so he falls in love Terrible. with himself. <laughs> so that was funny. You're right, Sal, though. With the, without a picture on it, it's even funnier. Not even a picture on it, it makes that joke even funnier. That's right. And then, okay, fine. That's that. That made me laugh. So, like, about a couple hours later, I get a notification on my phone from Jack. Yeah, I'm like, uh oh. Here we go. This is where the fun begins. <laughs> well, somebody responds to this funny ass rant. Nothing to do. Like, my brain, you just take the clip out of context. It's just funny. It's just very funny. <laughs> so then somebody responds with, and it's been a while since we've gotten this one WWE's fake, y'all. LOL. <laughs> Thank you, Roman Reigns. Oh, what the fuck? Who plays guys? hockey. Like, come on what now. What picture is that? I have no idea. But I think it might be a hockey player. But like, what's funny about uh, it? I was Sidney Crosby. Go figure. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you're telling it's an ugly picture? Well, it's Sidney Crosby. So I'm a it, loser. It's an ugly picture. Take it for what it's I'm worth. I'm a loser. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, so that's the response. So I was in a, so okay for those who haven't real life with me. I have no filter since I got out of the hospital. I have like no filter. <laughs> so, no. But worse than normal. You guys know I don't have much of a filter, but I'm it's worse than normal since I got home from the hospital. <laughs> okay. And I decided, fuck it. I'm gonna have a load of fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I went heavy, heavy on the sarcasm on the response. And this is my exact response. If you don't if you want to heard the little TikTok, you'll see it's still there. I'm like OMG, I'm so glad you told me. Only been a wrestling fan for over 20 years, so I would have never known it was a stage show for their entertainment. Thank you so much. And the guy responds with no problem. I think he realized, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Went up there, because I don't think you were on that week, where his dad got so, attacked for living in, living in his parents' basement. 
So ah uh, yes <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's what that so does does this person uh, like understand sarcasm? Or... I have a feel like he did because he didn't respond. Ah. There's an actual response. Because I think if he will, there would have been more to this. At, <laughs> at, at least, at least he understands sarcasm. Critch understands nothing in life. No, no. except basically smelling himself. <laughs> but yeah, I had to bring that a up. A decomposed body probably smells better than Critch. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so rotten eggs probably smell better than Critch then. That should be the name of our show. A dead Rotten body smells better than Critch. <laughs> <laughs> Rotten eggs are better than Critch. That, that, that. No comments. Nothing going to respond to that one. So, well, that's that. I just wanted to share. I wanted to share that with people. So that made me laugh. If you, like I said, go on there. Make comments. Well, give us, give us fucking material. I have no problem with that. Give us some material. Have some fun with us. And you guys, you guys just did that. How about that? Give us a couple of minutes of material. I'm not going to ever complain about that. By the way, I do want to say that last week, some thousand from Sal, um, talking about Drew's character, got us almost a thousand views on TikTok. Well, that was a nice surprise. Oh, wow, that was a nice oh, surprise last week. Oh, very cool. Good job. <laughs> that was over like a week span, so it was, it was pretty cool. Very nice. So I, just, I just clicked on my on the um, Blake Ashes TikTok page, and, and, and over a thousand views from last week. So there you go. Okay. That equals like. Six years worth of lessons for us. <laughs> it sometimes feels like it. Wow. It sometimes it feels like it. So, so, so does that does that give us like 02 percent in the ratings? <laughs> oddly enough, higher than um, oddly enough, better ratings than um than Rampage. Um, <laughs> 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 And more than NWA power. Well, how did they get rid of it? It's an app. Hit it count. Don't, uh, <laughs> don't, for, don't, for, don't forget that Rampage is live immediately following Dynamite tonight. Oh, yeah. Well, people are going to hear us on Friday. Right. But yeah, right. It is right. It's going to be weird to be a three hour AW block because it is an NWA tournament. So, oh, by the way, before, I even, before we get into wrestling, you just reminded me because I was going to bring this up, but you, said, uh, you, mentioned, you mentioned it in the NWA tournament. So, okay. I'm not going to get into the brackets because by the time people hear this, it's going to be the whole world. First, first full day is going to be over. So, there's no point in getting into that. But um, did anyone hear about this team Wagner last on Tuesday night? What happened here with this team? So Wagner, um, they're sixty. They're now in the tournament. They play had a playing game on Tuesday night against Howard. Okay, fine, whatever. We have these four playing games for the last four spots. It's it, it's fine. Well, they 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 are seventeen and fifteen. They're a sixteen seed playing tournament. They won their they won their division to get this far. Cool. Here's the key part. They because of injuries that have happened throughout the season, they have seven active players on their roster. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. And they whoa. won on Tuesday night to advance to the tournament. Oh. Seven players. <laughs> so wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah, exactly. They won. I'm like, what? They actually pulled the win off with seven players? <laughs> <laughs> So from here on out, you can't have any more injuries. But I'm like, I was impressed. I'm like, I know they're gonna get killed in the first round. Like, I'm I, again, I don't know when this game is especially happening Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday or Friday because I didn't even look yet. But like, yeah. seven players the advance of the tournament is pretty damn impressive. <laughs> yeah. Hey, did you guys hear the other thing too? That some people are using AI to do their oh. brackets for them so ah. they can get the winner. There's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's, that's cheating, not, that's, man. That's, 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 that is that's not a, that's that's cheating. Dad, 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 that what? Say something? Yeah, that's right. not new. That's not a new thing. That's cheating. You ever hear of the dad? It, forever, forever, as long as there's been online brackets, mm-hmm. before AI became a phrase that we all complained about, yeah, yeah. There's, also, there's always been autofill brackets. This is not new. This is not a new thing. <laughs> There's always been autofill brackets. Like whatever happened, you, know, you, can go, you can go on your ESPN app right now. Well, yeah. By the time people hear this, it's gonna be too late. But like, yeah. ESPN and CBS Sports. I use CBS Sports because it's free. Mm-hmm. You don't make your brackets. You can make your own, or you can have them fill it. It's always been like that. That's not new. That's not new. <laughs> Or is it just lazy because you don't want to pick teams? Or it's just you have to have two brackets. You have your one you made and the one they made for you. There's okay. nothing wrong with that. That's how it's always been. That's All not right. new. <laughs> well, we have both Wisconsin Marquette 
in the dance, so we'll see what happens. Yes. So. All right, that's that. Let's do this. And now, let's get into the crazy world of professional wrestling. All right, first things first, um, for those listening, obviously, Friday morning, watch back down tonight. Me, Mandy, and CJ will be there, and we have damn good tickets, and we will be on television because of where our seats are. So, yeah, we got these tickets back in December at our at the last show. I'm going to be back in October when we were at the last show before Crown Jewel. And um, we got fantastic seats, literally dead camera, dead on. You'll see us where we are. Like, you will see us. And we have signs. Hey. We have everything. We, we, we made signs for the show. Like, we are, we will be on television. So, watch Matt down. You will see us. So this, so my my understanding, too, it's a sold out show. Oh god damn it! Yeah, it, it, it'll be the 10th straight TV sellout for WWE. Mm -hmm. Like it's a big deal, and I, I'm Wonderful. laughing. I'm laughing because we always joke about Roman Reigns' schedule, right? We always joke about it. Yeah. Thing. This is the third straight show in Milwaukee. Roman Reigns will be at <laughs> third straight. I, I was like, that's hysterical to me. Like Roman Reigns we, loves in Milwaukee. It cracked me up. It didn't crack me up for ages. It must be the cheese. No, I think it's the bratwurst. Hey, maybe, yeah. maybe <laughs> the brats. But yeah, yeah the brats. I told that to Mandy. I'm the like, brats. you know, because they, they announced it. Um, they announced it last week that he was going to be here. I'm like, wait, Roman is coming to Milwaukee again? <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> Milwaukee again? Like, How the lucky are you? Here? It's a bright the hell out of me too. Like, what? What? Well, you know, it, it's the road to WrestleMania. I know, but Rock's not going to be here. Roman will be here, so that's pretty. Cool. Well, we'll get to Rock. We'll get to Rock. Okay. Get to okay. him later. Trust me, we have a lot to say about the Rock later. We'll get there. Okay. <laughs> but no, I, I'm bit bad, and then I'm not upset. The Rock's not going to be here. I'm not upset about this at all. Like I'm actually more intrigued to watch the Roman Cody stuff than I am a Rock right now. <laughs> so we'll get more into that later. Okay, Doogie. Um, <laughs> um, so a little follow up from last week. <laughs> I love that we still use that. <laughs> I know this, this is literally since like the first like, the first like month of the show. We're still using it a lot later. <laughs> <laughs> One of the last like running gags from eleven years ago. <laughs> well, it, it's it's either that or else that was two computers ago for me. Like I was two computers. Or... <laughs> <laughs> it's either that or else I go. And now here's the news. But the day, like it's been two full computers ago since I said it. Like, hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, when you go. put it that way, it's even funnier. <laughs> <laughs> I had a computer graph and lost show files that I still have. <laughs> back, back, back when you had you had Windows Nine, yeah. There you say, go. No, it's just funny. I literally had a computer crash and lost the episodes of our show. Yeah. I still have that. <laughs> it's like Twinkies during an apocalypse. It just doesn't go away. Uh, there so, you go. Uh, so a follow up to last week. We were talking about um Tingo. He had an injury. Apparently he has an injured knee. Required surgery. We talked about last week. He has officially vacated the AAA Mega Ch World Championship. Vacant is the new champion. Again, greatest, once again. The greatest wrestler that ever lived. So Ta -da! End of the reign at 833 days. That which sucks. Absolutely insane. Especially because yeah, that sucks. You know, was yeah, defending it all over the world. Legitimately defending the yes. title everywhere. Yeah. All yes. the time. Right. Like, this is one of those reigns where it's like, it sucks it ends like this. Like, yeah. it really does suck because he legitimately defended the title everywhere. Um, yeah. And he had and they had, a, he had to change some matches on WrestleMania weekend because he was set to defend the title on multiple shows on WrestleMania weekend. So I like, had a chance to hold a bunch of stuff up. Now, where did he get hurt? Did he get her on AEW television? Or? Uh, I think it was a triple A, a triple A show. I think it was a triple A show. Oh, okay. Yeah, but shit happens. I mean, things happen. You get hurt, and um, yeah. well, with his move, yeah, good. With his move set that he does, if you watch him, it, it's kind of like something like this was bound to happen, and yeah. unfortunately, it did. And it, the guy. For his moves and abilities and doing everything, he's a good frontman for Triple A, and unfortunately, he's going to be sidelined with an injury. And now someone needs to step up and take his place. So, so what's interesting is, I expected to because the last time they did this, I mean, so it was funny. You go to Wikipedia. So I wanted to make sure I got the days right for his center. Mm -hmm. right. What's Wikipedia? And what's hysterical about the um, Wikipedia page? It's like. Here's all these champions, not vacated anything. And then you have Kenny Omega, long ass reign, vacated injury. 
by Kingo. Long ass rain, vacated due to injury. Injury. <laughs> oh wow. It was very interesting. But um anyway, so they're like, what are we gonna do here? So randomly at a triple A show the other day, I, I'm I am i am not triple A viewer. I just follow things. If I things pop up on my Instagram on my on my Twitter page, it happens. You know what I mean? This is how I find out about triple A stuff. So all of a sudden, randomly, Nick Nemeth pops up in triple A. I don't know why he's in triple A. Zero clue why he's in triple A. Getting an album. Oh, I could tell you why. Why? Because he's gonna win the title. <laughs> Nick Nemeth is in the ring, and all of a sudden, apparently he gets confronted by a virtual up patron. He's still alive? Hmm. Apparently. And for some reason, <laughs> I don't know why, they're having a title match at Triple A, at Triple Mania um, 37. I wonder if they think I would know Roman numerals. 37. <laughs> no, you're right. You are correct. 37. For the, for the vacated title. The last time we did this, there was like an eight pack, like an eight pack challenge that was before, after a tournament and the qualify. Here having a one on one match between Nick Nemeth and Virtual Well, I was going to say, I mean, so, would they even have enough time to do a tournament? I don't know. I, I figured you something on WrestleMania weekend or something. And I mean, you so, have, have that weekend. You have shows you can work on that weekend and do something. But like, apparently, I'm going to do that. TNA <laughs> has allowed him to do this. What do you mean, TNA? I oh, thought he was. Nick Nemeth. Yes. Nick Nemeth. This motherfucker. Okay. I think this motherfucker is everywhere. So, yes. for those who. He's living his best life. In in so for those who know, um, traditionally me, Dad, and John will sit down and do our pre WrestleMania weekend stuff that's not WWE related, mm-hmm. and I've been working on that quietly in the background. And um, once a week I'll sit and I'll go through the cards and I'll update this little thing we put together. Once a week I'll sit down. In the last three days, <laughs> updates have been coming in, and Nick Nemeth is literally on like. Five shows now on WrestleMania weekend. <laughs> All over the collective. He's doing other things. He's out fucking blood sport. I'm like, what are we doing? Like, what is happening? He's the new he's, Japan. He's champion. doing New Japan. He's a champion of New Japan. He's a he's he's made eventing impact um um TNA pay-per-view next month. I'm like, what is going on? Like, All I can say about Nick right now. I give him credit. Like <laughs> is he's getting all these airline miles on his card. So that way he'll earn a free trip to wherever he wants to go when he gets some time off. I was like, I'm, I'm impressed. Because like I said, he's made eventing the TNA pay-per-view next month. And I'm like, this is insane, this man. But like Dow said, he's living his best life and having a game good time. I can't complain, but it's just interesting. So I mean, his work schedule lately is just insane. Wow, off the charts. Mm-hmm. So and uh-huh. it, you know what? The rest of the matches I've seen on TNA, he's been really good. So I can't yes. even bad things about it. The matches he's had every year were really good. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that. Speaking of the of the of the um, the collective, a WrestleMania weekend. Okay. This one I did not see coming. Did not see this one coming. Okay. Um, randomly the other day, GCW put out a tweet apparently saying there's some big important news coming out for the collective. But again, I'm not on Twitter all the time anymore. So hey, they were downplaying that. That's for sure. <laughs> but like, well, they said that, and I'm like, okay, I don't. I'm not on Twitter enough to know what's going on. But I go on Instagram randomly, and all of a sudden, GCW puts up a post saying, Shayna Baszler is going to be at Bloodsport. What? (laughs) Whoa, whoa, whoa. Pump the brakes. (laughs) So, I take it that maybe this is a sign? Well, well, apparently, Josh Barnett, who runs Bloodsport, called Paul Levesque and asked if he can use Shayna Baszler. And he said, sure. (laughs) <laughs> she ain't doing nothing that and, week we, <laughs> and he didn't even put up a fuss no didn't make a big deal out of it he said go ahead go do your thing but here's the oh. so this gets announced for Bloodsport by the way Bloodsport is already sold out the show is already sold out before this announcement so they didn't oh. need this. they didn't need this as long as they needed right. to sell tickets the show is already it's one of the first damn um, DCW shows that sells out every year so it's wow. not a big they didn't need this I think like last year the show will sit out when suddenly John Moxley's on the show. Same thing happened last year. They didn't need Moxley. Moxley wanted to do the show. Right. <laughs> like, so, so I'll be to do. So then, um, during Raw, the announcement comes out because it's a great time to do a WWE um centric announcement during Raw. Very smart on DCW's part. Mm-hmm. They put up a Mac graphic that I did not expect either. Shayna Baszler will be facing TNA Wrestling's. Masha Slamovich. <laughs> wow. 
The WWE versus TNA in- on a CCW show. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Only in America, folks. Only in America. Sure, that one's coming. I, there was no way last week we're off the air, and I swear that one coming. <laughs> so, I mean, should we read into this or not, or I what? Know. I don't know. I think it's cool. I think it's a really cool thing. Didn't expect it. You know, it's a really cool thing to do. Is is, is, like, is this there. Paul's way of basically kind of like? Putting a foot in the door to other organizations that he may want to work with in the future. That's not a bad idea. Look at what happened with them, the Royal Rumble in TNA. There you go. Like, it's a smart move. I mean, it's very, very smart. Um, by the way, the other match they announced, we're talking about it on Nick Nemeth. Nick Nemeth versus Steve Ball and Mike Bailey is happening at Bloodsport. Oh. Holy crap. Like, I, did not, no, okay, I have never watched Bloodsport. I'm not a big MMA person, so I've never watched but... Bloodsport. I'm going to have to watch fucking Bloodsport this year because of these <laughs> You <laughs> announced it. Like, it was not on my original like oh. list of matches I was going to watch, but I'm going to have to watch this damn show because like the spring break lineup's coming out and spring lineup's not that good. So maybe I'll replace spring break this year with Bloodsport. Yeah. I did <laughs> Speedball Mike Bailey has wow, he stepped up his game, so it's going to be a great match. Exactly. So that was a nice surprise that came out also on Monday. That announced Mike Bailey. Like, okay, sure, all right, we'll do that match too. So okay, so this is going to sound like a Mad Lib. I swear this is a real thing that happened, but it's really okay. like a bad lip. This video, like this said, it sounds like a mad lip, but it really happened. Here we go. Matt Cardona lost a match at Rev, at, 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 I think it was Rev Pro. Oh, Rev Pro. I don't know what company it was, but it matter. Lost okay. To Paul Walker Hauser, thanks to Bully Ray throwing Matt Cardona through a flaming cable. <laughs> okay. Uh huh. <laughs> I feel like that whole sentence means nothing to me, so I need a little context. <laughs> Paul Walker Hauser and Matt Cardona have had like an online feud going on for the last six months. Okay. And then oh, okay. Like Paul Walker Hauser winning a and winning an album. didn't win an Emmy or something like that. And like Matt Cardona tried to steal it and like all the kind of stuff going on. <laughs> oh, he's an actor? Yeah, he's he's in he's in Cobra Kai and things like that. Like he's a big deal. Oh. Yeah, oh, okay. He won an Emmy and everything. Like, it's a big okay, deal. so like, now that makes sense. Okay. It's a big deal. Like it's a very big deal. Okay. Like the fact that Bolinger Hauser did a wrestling match, it's surprising as it is. Like, it was surprising that they actually went along with the match as it is. But the fact that it was an indie show, number one. And for some reason, Bully Ray got involved. I have no idea why. <laughs> you know, why I, not? Why yeah. not? I do plan on watching it because it's on Fight TV. If you have your, Fight TV, if you have your Thriller TV package, which I already purchased to watch the collective and everything, it's part uh, of that. I don't have to pay extra to watch this match. I'm going to actually do go on my way and watch this match eventually. <laughs> I have to watch it. I had appointments and everything this week. Before. I was planning on watching it before this show, but I had appointments and everything, so I just haven't had a chance to go back and watch it yet. Yeah. So, so a flaming table. Yeah, I'm like, I just said it was so <laughs> funny. I'm like, I did it to me, and I'm so, like, this is not like Madeline, but this is really happened. Like, this so, really happened. <laughs> did, did Bully kind of say, hey, Paul, get the table. Like, I have to watch this back. I have to watch this in context because it looks absolutely hysterical when I see the video. Like, this is so stupid. Like, why is this? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So, all right, moving on. We um last week we ended the show talking about this, but now that it actually has happened, we can actually discuss it for real. Mm-hmm. Mercedes Monet debuted on Big Business and AEW this past Wednesday. And I was correct about the awful hair. Yes, you were terrible hair. Yes, you were correct. The outfit, worked. the outfit worked. The outfit was really cool. Like the actual outfit was awesome. The hair was terrible. But, yeah. um, and how do you see anything out of those glasses? It was like all there was like no lens. Well, did you have like, like, oh, think about this way. Jay Russo currently wearing those Zeke glasses. I have zero clue how he said anything out of those either. So what is this where he knows that I have no idea how? Yes. So, I'm listening to her theme music, and it says CEO, but some people basically mistake it as CD Hole. Sal, comment. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. Um, you had uh, nothing. Uh, no, uh, we, we <laughs> thought we heard CD as in you know compact disc, ho <laughs> as in slut. Oh so we God. heard CD ho. I will say though, I, I, Mandy thought it was funnier that it was CD ho. Which made her laugh really hard. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you would just say ho, ho? Um, but oh. yeah, the CEO, um, Mercedes Monet, is now in AEW. I gotta admit, people were going At least three years. At least three years. The contract yep. ridiculous. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. Um, can I say something about this? I, I, people like the music. 
if you're learning about the music company, it's better than the crap they had in New Japan. That music in New Japan was terrible. But yeah. oh my god, it was yeah. bad. You didn't hear it now. It was one of the worst things like, I've heard in a long, long time for a major star. It was like, yeah. what? but it was like all it was was a beat, um, random chain dropping, and then you're money. Monday. That was it. <laughs> that was the whole song. That was it. Hold on, I gotta see. I gotta see if this is on YouTube. It was so or bad. It was so it's, it's, it's not. It's not even like Shane's music. Here come the money. Like, that's catchy and fun, but like it was so bad. I'm like, this is terrible. Like, what? Why? Who approved this? Like, it was, and the funny part is, you do this right after like your Okada's awesome theme music with the with that money and everything. Like that awesome music he has. Like, no, but this is like it was bad. But um. Well, what do you think? What did you think of Mercedes Money's debut in AEW? Dad, go ahead. Who me? Um, oh, whoever oh. wants to start, go ahead. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. So. Whoever wants to start, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I mean, I miss the days when things would happen and you had no fucking clue because that would have been a huge pop. You know what well, I mean? Like, I get like Okada's debut. Yeah. Right. I didn't yeah. see that coming. I didn't see that coming. So I like, was price. So I get it. They wanted to sell it out and make a big deal. I get it. I do. But I don't know. It was just like, meh, okay, there she is. And and then after hearing about the contracts, let me tell you. That was awful. Not okay. worth it. Ten he is not worth that kind of money. I'm what was sorry. It 10 million? What was it like ten million? Like it was something- ten million. For three, years. I, I do For three years guaranteed. I mean, let me get it up. I do have the actual numbers. Maybe one well, time. actually, no. I think it's ten years, ten million for five. I found it. I found it. So here we go. Contract reported ten million dollars a year. Three a year? year? Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. Bam. A year. What? A year for three to five years with an opt out option after three. She is not worth wait, thirty wait million dollars. So she got a rock deal. But this is bigger than any woman wrestler in the history of the company combined. Some people. So maybe we don't have this combined. You know, the other, the other, <laughs> thing, the other thing I heard with her contract is she has less working days than I guess the entire roster. And that's why they're calling it a rock deal because it's like well, she I, can, I, I she can show up what she up. wants. But here's the best part, and Sal said the number it's not worth it. So they have this whole She's hype. not worth that kind of money, I'm sorry. So we have all the hype, right? All the big hype over her return. Everyone knew she was coming. Everyone mm-hmm. knew she was going to be there. And then the ratings didn't even go up. The ratings did not even go up at all. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> this theme you know, is ridiculous. Here we are. This theme <laughs> is ridiculous. I got it. Okay. <laughs> Money. Money. What the? That is ridiculous. I'm sorry. Money. No, that's it. That was the New Japan music. That was the New Japan music. <laughs> Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. So bad. Like, it was money, money, worse. money. I told you it was worse. I told you it was there. So, because of a wonderful <laughs> contract, I think CD Hole. <laughs> Does make more sense. Oh my lord! So she's she, out sorry. that money. Like, I know I'm a hater, but like she's not worth that money. I'm sorry, it's and she's so injury prone. Oh god, <laughs> <laughs> injury prone too. Like, come on! I no, no, I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree with you. She's not worth you know, dollars a year. She's not at any level. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Tony, but. Wait, wait, wait. You're, you're... What was he paying? What was he paying CM Punk? Do we remember? I don't, I don't remember. I can look it up real fast. I don't. I don't think that ever came out. I don't think that number ever actually came out. Oh, okay. I will look right now. Why? Look. Why do I think she's getting paid more than CM Punk? I That's what I was thinking too. I don't think it made more than Okada. No, probably close, but Okada not... is not getting paid that. He's not getting paid that. Like he's not. Like... No. I remember, I remember well, that. Number like three point five million. Wasn't that high. Ada's like three point five or four million dollars a year. Yeah, for Okada. Yeah, that I remember. That yeah, because it translated to like a billion. Yeah, like he translated to like a billion yen what, or whatever. What is it that Tony sees in her that she he thinks that she's worth that much? Because he just wanted to take her away from WWE. I think. I think that's what it is. Give her a money. Give her an amount of money. 
that she would be stupid to say no to, that WWE would definitely not pay her. Well, yeah. Just I mean, to say that he has her. I mean, we'll look at it this way. Okay, more Wait, money. Uh, sorry, I just heard something. The, okay. el the elite members, the people that founded this company, right, are only getting paid three to six million dollars a year. Compared That's to ridiculous. Ridiculous. Compared to so, how come ridiculous. Matt? I just saw that. That I just saw that. I'm sorry. Like, so what? How, how come? How come Matt and Nick aren't throwing a hissy fit? I cannot. Matthew believe, and I know that was... get it right. Get it right. I'm sorry, Matthew, Matthew and Nick. Matthew and Nick. <laughs> so let me get straight. She's getting paid more money than the anyone founding members. Okay, here we go. I found it. I found something. I don't. I can't find them. Um, CM Punk salary, but I found. Okay. AW's numbers. I don't know how official these are, but here we go. According okay. to this, before Mercedes and before Hangman, before um Osprey, oh yeah. Osprey's on here, but um, um Okada's not. So before oh, Okada's on here too. According to this average salary, yeah. Um Hangman is actually the most at two point five million dollars a year. And then Adam Cole and Kenny Omega, and then Brian Danielson Mox and Okada. This is average, not like per year. This is average contract. And then okay. Well, Punk was at two. Was, uh, Punk and MGF paid the same. Two point five. Two point three five million average contract. Okay. Wow. And then Jericho and Osprey, and then Copeland. So does or is it before and she's worth five times more than them? Yep. That's what we're getting at here. Okay, wow. so she's That's getting more money than she's getting more money than. Anyone on else on the roster? Period. How much, is, how much does Roman Reigns get paid? Um, I don't know. I can look it up fast. But like, because I can guarantee you, it's no more. And ever. you know what? To your point, though, where CM Punk is different. CM Punk, at least CM Punk led to, like the fucking um the, the um TV company fucking um the fuck the name of the company. Right. Yeah, they, they are actually giving them um the AW more money for TV rights. Like, right. Punk, it led to that, like to their credit. You know what I mean? Like, right. Although he's still the return, the return on him was better. A lot right. better. Other way, it looks like um, Roman Reigns. Yeah, he's paid wrestling the WWE by far. Um, his net worth is twenty million, and it's worth five million dollars a year. So, so she's I, getting I, more I, than I, 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 okay. contract of WWE. A regular wrestler. Hold the hold Rock. the phone for a second. Not including Rock. She's getting more than double. Roman Reigns. Double than Roman. Double, Double the longest reigning champion we've had in the in, in the modern era. <laughs> Tony, were you drunk and or high when you did this? Because I'm sorry, she ain't worth that much unless, of course, she's doing something else on the side. I'm not saying she is. Don't go but, there. Let's not go there with all the stuff coming on WWE. Let's not go there. Right. But my <laughs> thing is, she is not worth the money because the she Monet. doesn't have that. There's the name of the show. It, She's not worth the Monet. Not worth the Monet. Not worth the Monet. There it is. There it is. She, <laughs> she doesn't have that it factor that you need her to have. I mean, I, I look at her like a light bulb. She's bright when she starts, but then she burns out real quickly. Well, there you go. We'll obviously get more into Mercedes as we get closer, as we get more to things, the pay-per-views and all that kind of stuff next month. Um, I will say it's interesting that they didn't push her right to the main event that she's like feuding with like Julia and Willow, which is in that little feud now. That's interesting to me. Like they didn't push her right to the main event. They didn't put they replace Diana Perrazzo with her instead. Like they didn't do that. Like I appreciate that at least. You know, like well, I, I would think she would have gone after Chris. I mean, I well, that Lander, that Lander, well, it's the same storyline, really, because that Lander and Willow and Okay. Julia and okay. Kevlar are all in the same storyline. So at least that makes sense. It's weird that, that Mercedes is a mid carter right now because, like, Tony Storm and Deanna Parasso. Ten million and, dollars. And Thunder Rosa and all them are in the main event scene. Like, it's weird. Like, it really is. Not at $10 million. The other thing that just came in the mind is think of someone like Britt Baker. Now, she's going to go knocking on Tony's door going, well, if Mercedes gets ten million a year, I want fifteen. It's, re it's really weird. And then you know what's interesting? You remember back in the WCW days, yeah. like like Kevin Nash and all them had like in their contracts the guaranteed it, contracts. Yeah. Well, well, remember though, in their contract they had a clause. A bunch of them had a clause saying if someone gets paid more than me, then my contract goes up. I wonder if anyone in AEW has that. I 
That'd be interesting. I wonder. I don't know, I don't know but it's okay. just something I thought and, about. The, and the other thing is, do they have creative control on their character? I don't, I don't, I you know what's funny. I think Brian Danielson probably does. That's probably why he has all these weird dream matches for no reason. Uh-huh. Collision, is, although he's selling, you don't watch Collision regularly, but Collision, if you watch the first half hour of a Collision every Saturday, every week, it's the Brian Danielson fantasy camp. The first half hour of Collision <laughs> every Saturday. But every week, Brian Danielson, he went with his stupid and he kicked it. Yeah, who did kicked it? But every half hour, first half hour of Collision with Brian Danielson versus. I want to face this Japanese legend. I want to face this guy. I want to face this guy. <laughs> and while I have zero problem with that at times, like for instance, this past week, out of nowhere, we ended up Brian Danielson versus um Shibata. Shibata. Unexpected. That match was fantastic. Did not no way in hell did I say that would ever, ever happen. So I'm happy that match happened. <laughs> I, I, I got one. I got the first one. half hour of closing been the last like month or two. I got one. How about Brian Danielson versus Josh Barnett? Intriguing, intriguing, but like I did not expect to see Tabata Danielson on my television screen in 2024. Like, no way now. I, I have a, I have a feeling, I have a feeling Tony saying yes only because he knows that this is probably Brian Swan's song before he finally retires, or, or just some full time retirement, or what the hell he's doing. I have no idea, but it is interesting right. that the first half hour collision has been Brian Danielson fantasy camp for the last couple of months. <laughs> But anyway, well, one last thing, triple double AW, then we'll get to some WWE stuff because I do want to have some fun with this. But um, so it looks like because we're watching because um, we're obviously recording this before Dynamite Rampage this week. And they're splitting up the triple crown already. I mean, this big deal about triple crown, triple crown, triple crown, <laughs> and they're splitting it up already because the AEW Continental Championship Crown, whatever the fuck we're calling it, yeah, is on the line against Okada on Dynamite this week. So I'm assuming Okada's winning. Okay. And, um, <laughs> and then um. Uh, Kingston's also going to be winning the Ring of Honor Championship against Mark Briscoe with Super Card of Honor, which means oh. he's winning. <laughs> well, yeah, well, well, Mark Briscoe was supposed to win the title a year ago, but then he got hurt. Like right. this, Mark Briscoe was supposed to win the title last year, Super Card of Honor. <laughs> so, so that would leave Eddie left with his New Japan title if things go exactly. Home. So it's interesting that they bring it up. But how do you feel about this? Because we had this big deal about the Triple Crown, and now we're splitting it up randomly out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> Basically confused because the way it was set up originally was basically to have all three belts defended at the one time. Now, if you're split it, I mean, are you doing this for to get ratings for your product, or is it because you realize that putting all three titles together at one time was a pain in the ass? Now, what do you well, think? I mean, the New Japan title doesn't belong to him, so it would have been kind of hard to keep up with it anyway, in my opinion. But that Continental Crown Jewel title, whatever the fuck it's called, on top of the 80,000 titles they have already, it wasn't even necessary. So, like, I, I feel like this is just such a stupid well, title that just doesn't mean anything. And we said <laughs> it back, and I, I know I said it back when we had the mm-hmm. tournament to start. And then the tournament happened that it should have been like the G1 where you get a trophy right. and the trophy right. leads to a title match. Like, that's what I thought we were doing. Right. I thought we right. would have started. But no, because if, if, if you, if you right. listen to the way things are with this title, every year they're going to have a tournament to crown a new champion with this belt. And so that means until you have the tournament, this person has the title. Exactly. That's what I thought we were going to do. Well, what about that I stupid we Owen Hart title or whatever? Do you, you just show it that one time and that, that's it? That, that, happens. That, that one, that, okay, I'm actually okay with that because they're not defending it. That was right. just a award for winning the tournament. And, and then you get a title shot. That's what that was. And I understood yeah. that. And that made sense to right. me. Like, I have zero problem with that because it's not a real title. They never acknowledged it as a real title. It was right. an award, reward for winning the tournament. Correct. It's more like hard. a prestige. It's a prestige title, or basically yeah, you don't defend absolutely. it. Absolutely, that's that's a okay. That's a hundred percent fine. You know, <laughs> it's not real. You know, yeah. this this particular title just gets more confusing and more bogged down. That I, eventually, what I see happening is it's going to be eliminated. Or again, it should have been as we joked about when it happened, but now I'm being more serious about it. Now it should have been an actual right. crown. An actual crown. Okay. The you couldn't right. defend it, and it was just one, and then you award yourself something, whatever the hell the champion. And then you got a contract in the briefcase for a whatever it was. 
whatever it was, like whatever the thing was supposed to be for. That's yeah, for ten million dollars. Ooh, something like that, like something ridiculous. So, all right, we'll talk more about that next week and whatnot. So here we go. So all instead right. of getting into all the rest of Mania stuff, because this is no point in us going through things. Instead, I figured let's have a little bit of fun here and look back at the last couple of weeks because I couldn't really didn't have time last week because of all the stuff we we're talking about. Rock and Cody. We've been talking about it. We've been discussing it. But I actually have some clips for us. I went through did a little bit of research and had some fun. Um, for the last month of television, last three weeks of TV. Now I'll I'll start us off from when I was in the hospital and okay. I'm just relaxing. And all of a sudden I get I'm I'm just going through my phone and before I begin this, I'm going to say this. For no reason are you going to hear any, except for one clip from Rock's 21-minute monologues on Instagram. I do not have the patience to go through 21-minute monologues on Instagram that I can't even fast-forward through on my phone. <laughs> I can't even fast-forward through them to, to edit clips. So this first clip is from one of those, but I didn't isolate this. Somebody else did. Okay. Cody wrote, from the bottom of my heart, man to man, fuck your story. <laughs> so... <laughs> First Yay. Time. That's first things first. Fuck them kids. So that's interesting to me. Fuck them kids. So. <laughs> Thank you. So who sell made it today? <laughs> so let's see who sell hated today. <laughs> Thank so you I, very I, much. I no problem with the fuck your story. I think that's pretty funny. So last week we were discussing the the, the, tact, the, um, the whole like in the ring end of SmackDown that went off the air abruptly because <laughs> they didn't know how to run on time. And for those who missed it, your dad, the American dream, one of the rock's heroes is looking down. Isn't it true that you're the youngest of three? And isn't it true that your sister was a cheerleader for the Dallas Cowboys? And isn't it true that your brother, your brother is a Hall of Famer, future Hall of Famer. Yeah, and you're 20 years younger than your siblings. Is that right? You know why? Because you were a mistake. Slap. Let him go. Let him go. Yeah, Dad, no, no, you're saying something. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I kind of like where Cody got the slap because now it was Rock got the slap in for the press conference and Cody got it in on a show. So she said, Dad. <laughs> so. <laughs> CEO, CDO, CD Ho. CD Ho. Oh, Sal, we, we've been doing this way too long. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> so now we're even at a slap of peace. So where does it go from there? So I have to. That was too damn funny. That was pretty funny. Um, anyway. So, so okay, so that was that. And um, by the way, so what's funny about that whole promo is the we didn't discuss last week. Um, Cody's sister went on Twitter and was like, "What the fuck? You, what the fuck's wrong with you, Rock? Why are you bringing this up? I tell me it's not even true." And then he also left out a sibling. By the way, apparently Rock left out a sibling <laughs> as well. <laughs> the whole thing that he, like, that he was like, going nuts about. So, like, so Dustin, Dustin Rhodes, AWs, Dustin Rhodes, like you do. Fuck the rock. <laughs> Went on his on his Twitter page and decided to just blatantly. He's apparently just some like tag belt that he's involved in in his indie company. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I, I don't care enough to really look into this. <laughs> I don't really care. But literally in the video, he's like zoom in on these belts and just looked at the camera. Fuck the rock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well done, Justin. No, no, no comment needed. Well done. So uh, last Friday, I started a trend. By the way. It all started with fuck Cody them kids. Mm. Fuck Cody Rhodes. <laughs> well, there's the one promo where Rock mentions his mom. And you can tell when You're Rock... Angry and... yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck them kids. I'm a trendsetter. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck them kids. Fuck Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes. <laughs> From the bottom of my heart, man to man, fuck your story. Fuck the Rock. <laughs> Great. Good video. <laughs> oh, hang on. Hang on. Hang on a second. Everyone's so, throwing. 
Everyone's frozen. They're back. That, that basically back. left a sore spot with, with Cody. So now my question is, as they're doing these promos, I'm sure they had to get some sort of okay that, okay, we, we're going to do this, and we're going to bring this out. And I don't know, does Cody tell his family ahead of time that they're going to be mentioned in the promo? Well, that being said, perfect segue. Perfect segue. You don't even see my notes. That's the best part. You don't even have my because it's not in the run sheet. Just, I have separate notes for this. So very, well done. Okay. You don't even see my notes in front of me. Ooh. Well done on the segue. Thank you. So last week on SmackDown, for those who missed SmackDown for whatever reason, because I don't know who the hell is not watching SmackDown right now because it's almost three million viewers watched SmackDown last week. Um, <laughs> for real, like almost three million people watched SmackDown last week. There's uh, still I'm, seven million less than Mosini's contract. <laughs> it is, it's just funny to be like apparently by the way let me show the ratings the ratings were broken down and rock promo yeah fantastic ratings for rock promo at the beginning of the show but like the main event only only lost like sixty thousand viewers by the main event of the show so that's really impressive for smackdown that's really really impressive knowing the rock was only going to be in the first half hour of the show so anyway the rock opens the show with with the rock concert on friday like you do and that was so it's been 21 years since we last had a rock concert. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, which is insane when you think about it from that perspective. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. It's been 21 years since we did this last. <laughs> and the last time we did this, Rock had the guitar and he's playing doing his thing. Well, this time we're in Memphis, and the Rock apparently forgot it was supposed to be a heel. He <laughs> forgot it was supposed to be a heel. And he came out and started playing to the crowd. And saying I'm home in Memphis, like, <laughs> like fake promo. <laughs> everybody off. We threw everything off. And um has a freaking guitarist and a harmonica sitting by the announce table <laughs> ready to go <laughs> for the rock concert. <laughs> and he has his lyrics in front of him. Like he's doing like like on a freaking like thing in front of on a music stand. Music stand in front of a piano. Like it was so ridiculous what he did for this. <laughs> and <clears throat> I, I'm not going to play everything because it's too much, and a lot of it wasn't. It was funny, but it wasn't worth us talking about. It really wasn't worth it. But continuing on from what Dad said about um, Cody's family, um, this was said. Well, here's a little story about how Cody was born. This is historically accurate, as all of the Rock stories are historically accurate. Dusty's youngest son was just what he feared. He tried to raise him right, but he turned out to win. By the way, when he said too weird, he put a picture of Stardust on the screen. <laughs> I want to throw that out there. Yes, yes, they did. Let's make a note of that. That's when Dusty said with total frustration that drugs and cheap Condoms was a bad combination. I know it keeps Cody awake. To know he wasn't planned and he was a mistake. That's okay, Cody. The important thing is you're here now. (laughs) (laughs) So again, I gotta give Cameron's do, and I think it's bad. I was entertained. I was really entertained by The Rock. The problem was it wasn't a heel promo. This is not a heel promo. <laughs> it's not. It's just funny. Like it's just really entertaining. That's the problem. I I think that was Rock's version of stand up comedy, but like, it was weird. And by the way, there was one that like, I don't have a clip of it, but um, where he calls out Seth and says his wife is more popular than him, and he puts a picture of Becky and Seth up from Becky's book. Up on the screen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, with the with the with the titles and nothing else. Oh, there was, no, a different, was a different one. A different picture. The marrying oh. my casting pajamas. Up on the, the, the the living the living okay. clown emoji. Is that like, it? Like, okay, sure. I think even Rock knew that he could put that picture up on Fox. Look, if it was yeah. on the, yeah. with the network, he probably got away with yeah. it. On Fox, that might have been a little too far. <laughs> a little bit Can too I far. just mention something else? I don't know who's picking out Rock's wardrobe, but the oh no, wardrobe. those Rocks no. Goddamn. No, no, I can tell you. I can tell you the answer to your okay. question. Those are just him calling back to the 03 Rock. Those are the exact same outfits he wore in 03. Just they upgraded it because of his muscles. Those are the exact same outfits from 03. It is goddamn ugly shirts. Yeah, that's what those yeah. are from. They were a combination of the Rock um, 90s and 2003 Hollywood Rock. That's I wouldn't go out and purchase those shirts on purpose. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, they, they look like 
somebody <laughs> threw up in them and you just spread it all over the material. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's what that is. It's actually a callback to himself. Oh, got it. The funny part is, like, apparently the first week he came out was supposed to be an outfit from, like, 2003. Then he realized he can't fit in it anymore because he has more muscles than he did in 2003. <laughs> so that's why it was Oops. open and not closed. That's why it was open. <laughs> time to bring back the fanny pack there, Rockster. <laughs> Give him time. Give him time. During him, he'll probably pull <laughs> so, um, so the other thing here from the Rock concert, it wasn't even sung. Because, again, it was the crowd was so behind it that it didn't feel like a heel promo at all. <laughs> that was the problem. The crowd was so behind it. And it didn't help. By the way, the guitarist and the harmonica guy are getting into it. And are like, yeah, Rock. Yeah, we agree. Yeah. <laughs> <What's going on? laughs> well, when did the, musician, help things. Like, <laughs> the musicians he learned, used were, like, uh, like Grammy-nominated country I, I, the problem is, I don't, The problem is, I don't have a clue who the people are because I don't listen to country music anymore as much as they used to. So, like, I don't yeah. know who these people are. People, if you're lucky, I know who Jelly Roll is at this point. Like, people like that. You know what I mean? Like, but, um, anyway, so then The Rock finishes the concert and he starts cutting the promo that said about Cody's mom. And, um, because Cody brought up his mom on Monday and he gives, uh, he gives Cody some shit for crying on Raw, which Sal, by the way, also did. And, um, <laughs> And um, <laughs> he's coding shit for crying on rocks. And then he goes and says, I'm going to take my, I'm, I'm, we're, we're going to beat you on night one. And then on night two, I hope your mom's sitting in the front row because I'm going to take my belt and I'm going to whip you with it and your blood's going to be over the belt. <laughs> and I'm going to hate right. her crying and all that kind of stuff. So then he finishes that whole promo with this. Because then the rock is going to whisper in your ear, Mama Rhodes. And with all the blood on your son's belt here and your tears on that belt, the rock is going to whisper in your ear. He's going to wipe your tears away. And he's going to say, Michelle, what can I say except you're welcome? Oh, yay! Shit! <laughs> he went out with a shock. I'm like, we had, to, we had to link it up with a Disney song from Moana. I, I could not believe it that he tied together a character that everybody knows. A song that everybody knows. A children's song. He turned into a heel promo. Wait, wait. Well How, done, Rock. I give him credit. Well done for that one. Hang on for a second. Doesn't he have to get permission to utilize that from Disney? I think because he's the producer of the new Moana movie, he probably doesn't have to. Because he's the producer of the new Moana movie. Yeah, but uh, the live action, the live action one next year. He's the producer. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, like, I think he's fine. So, yeah, I think he has. He's good with that now. Like, so, and then him referring to himself as the final boss. Yes. What are we okay. in a Jackie Chan movie? I, have no real, I actually have no problem with that. Honestly, I personally have no problem with the final boss thing because, at the end of the day, really, The Rock is higher than Roman. And he is the final boss of the Samoan family. Like, I understand the logic behind it. Well, I just wish there was more setup for it. He didn't just say it. Like, it's right. known. Because it was the first time he said it, and everyone was like, wait, what? What did he say? <laughs> what? Because <laughs> now there's a little bit of confusion. If Roman's the head of the table, how are you the final boss? Yeah, we'll get to Roman. I have a thought at the end of all this. So then Monday, Monday Night Raw. Cody goes on Twitter and says, I apologize for what's about to happen. <laughs> I'm like, okay. uh, Cody, what you got for sleep? What the hell do you have your sleep? So before I get to the clips, there's one thing I don't have the clips, but Cody goes and says, you talk about my mom. Well, my mom is one of the toughest people I ever meet to the point where she got into, a, what was her line? She got into a fight with somebody at a, a, a undercover cop at a concert. <laughs> Would I want I want to know that story? I want to know that story. <laughs> I really do. But um, and then she goes and says, nothing scares her. And then goes and says, Rock, I know your mom. And she's a nice person. <laughs> I'm like, you can turn around and play nice. I'm like, that might be the best response I've ever heard. You talk shit about my mom. I'm gonna talk nice about your mom. I'm like, that was one of the nicest kind of response so I've ever heard. That that <laughs> definitely paints the picture that. Cody's, Cody's a loser. Face, and Rock is the heel. Oh, Cody Rhodes. <laughs> so, Cody, get to the mic. The crowd is behind him. Um, sold out crowd him. Sold, sold out crowd on Monday. And um, I have clips. By the way, I'd like to thank Cody. It was Cody and The Rock. 
for these little clips being just under a minute each, which I greatly appreciate for editing purposes and for the show purposes. So thank you for that. Like all these little, little sound bites are under a minute, which I think for, <laughs> I think so for. As a matter of fact, I think this is the longest clip we have of all of them right here. This is the longest one. Um, so Cody opens up the promo talking about rock and, um, she actually addresses TKO in the promo, talks about the board, talks about the behind the scenes people, all this kind of stuff. But then opens up uh, because the Rock apparently dropped another Instagram video, another 20 minute Instagram video that I did not watch. And I tried to get a clip from here, but like I, I don't feel like hearing him saying, Everything's great. How was your week? That's actually how the video starts. With, how was your week? My week was great. That's actually how the video starts. <laughs> like, really, Rock? <laughs> so, anyway. There you go, old. So he, this is how this is how the pro this is how the promo started. This is how everything started on Monday. You knew we were up for we were in for fun. This is how things started. Rock referred to himself as our favorite heel. Which by the way, which by the way is not true. Sal's our favorite heel. Just want to throw that out there. <laughs> okay. A little bit of an insider term. We're not dumb. We know what that means. That means he's the bad guy. So I've known some heels. Bobby Heenan was a heel. Arn Anderson was a heel. Michael Hayes was a heel. Superstar Billy Graham was a heel. The nature boy Ric Flair was a heel. Rock, I don't think you're a heel. I think you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> He can't say that. There's little children that like him. So that was out. By the way, this is the top of the second hour of the show. This is not even the third hour. This is the top of the second hour. <laughs> I so, give it a promo two thumbs up. This is how it started. This is how things start. We're literally a minute into the promo when he dropped the asshole. I'm like, okay, this is going to be fun. <laughs> this is going to be fun. I did not expect to hear Cody cursing on Monday Night yeah. Raw. <laughs> yeah, and here's the thing for, for Cody to explain this, okay, sarcasm. Is that maybe there are some people that don't think Rock is a heel yet? I don't think he is at all, actually. Honestly, I think he's playing a character. I don't think Rock is actually a heel. I think he's playing a character. He's, at this and point. the or thing like, is, Drew McIntyre, right. that's a heel. He's right. a heel. Like, he legitimately, yeah. one of the best heels that we discussed it last week. Rock, yeah. and I hate to say this, Rock is not even at the level of Drew McIntyre right now when it comes to being a heel. I, I think <laughs> Rock's so, doing character so over the top. I think people kind of look at it as, eh, he's not a heel. He's a wannabe heel, but he's not a complete heel. So, this continues. And Sal, I, I can tell Sal has not heard this yet, but it's actually fine. No, so, I did not. Absolutely fine. I tend to look last night, but I knew you were playing video games, so you probably weren't going to get around to watching it. So, and, then, and then I forgot. So, this is the next little clip. Rock. Oh, by the way, so this is after um, um, Cody Gordon says, um, the TKO board says that you're the you're the top person you put on your Gucci shirt and everyone's like you got muscles you're gonna save the company all this kind of stuff and he's is this is the response to what this is rock damn my man you're you're a lot of things you're a lot of wonderful things you are the Brahma Bull you are the great one hell I got a pair of tennis shoes with your logo on it rock you're the only guy that I will ever stand across from in the ring that I can honestly say is a Mount Rushmore wrestler. But Rock, you are also a terrible salesman, a carny succubus. And for those who don't know what that means, you're a whiny bitch. Well, I think we got that defined. <laughs> Sal, your reaction? <laughs> um... Doesn't he like kiss babies and shake hands every day? Like, what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's flexing in front of small infants. I loved it. Like, wait, what? <laughs> Where did that come from? The crowd mother was so behind it because you did not expect this from Tony. You did not expect it from him. It was a nice surprise. Like, it was a very nice surprise. Rock goes out in public for the infants and he goes, Look, see, I got goosebumps on my arm. <laughs> Which, by the way, I, I that's so silly. Oh, trust me, Sal. I got I got another one for you. But okay. it actually from Cody. This is like a line the Rock would say or John Cena would say, not Cody. <laughs> Just like that from Cody. 
And April okay. 6th, the bell is going to ring. And what happens, Rock, when the bell rings, right? Are you going to bring the great one? Are you going to be the hero that I had growing up? Are you going to have all that big Dwayne energy? Or is it just going to be LDS, Little Dick Syndrome? <laughs> what? <laughs> Your pure and innocent Cody Rhodes has now been upgraded to edgy Cody Rhodes. Oh, wait. With, sounds reactivated for me. Not with with, 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 which, is, which is borderline PG 13 R. By the way, the crowd didn't start chanting um, LDS, by the way, right after that. But yeah. <laughs> Just like Mrs. Balls. I love your reaction, Sal. That was amazing. He can't say that. Well, he did. He, kisses, he, did. He, can't, he kisses babies and gives his stupid little weight belt to five-year-olds. <laughs> but he, yeah, he, he did. did. He, said he it. can't say that. So then, then we fight it for the finish up. We finish up. And then dad, dad brought up the final boss thing earlier. I had a clip. I have a clip of Cody addressing the final boss thing. You have referred to yourself as the final boss. Kudos to Brian Gewertz for that nickname. Perhaps you are the actual, literal, final boss. Perhaps I'm too naive to see that. But at WrestleMania, I don't think you're going to be the final boss. At WrestleMania, I think you're just Roman side chick. <laughs> Side chick. Who is this Brian Gerwitz anyway? Brian Gerwitz was a writer back in WWE back in the night back in the IHU era. He actually okay. wrote a really good book, a really really good book last year talking about the behind the scenes WWE. And he's also okay. Rock's personal writer. He's Rock's personal writer. Rock actually hired okay. him as his personal writer and advisor after he, WWE fired him about five years ago. So he actually is Rock's personal guy. Uh, okay. By the way, for those who have not heard, read his book, by the way, it's a fantastic read. This is the audio version. It's really, really good. Especially if you want to hear behind the scenes of Rock Cena, the whole Rock Cena thing. Go back to that. It was that fantastic behind the scenes of that. Like, if you want behind the scenes work, that was fantastic. But um, that's what Brian Gewertz is. It's a very big deal. The fact that this is the first time ever, though, his name has ever dropped in WWE television. Ever? Right. Ever? Okay. And Brian Gewertz went on Twitter right after this. But by the way, I do like this last sentence, by the way. <laughs> so by the way I want to know, though, why Pharaoh keeps getting shots at this. I have no idea why Pharaoh keeps getting attacked and all this stuff. And Rock attack Pharaoh. <laughs> I don't know why everyone's attacking Pharaoh. I have zero clue why. By the way, Pharaoh showed up to Raw wearing a bandana that said Rock is a cat. But it was a cat <laughs> logo that came across as Rock is a pussy. Which is hysterical. Absolutely hysterical, by the way, for that. That was very funny. <laughs> okay. But, um... So Brian Gewertz, literally right after this promo, Gordon says, final boss isn't anything I came up with. The Rock calls himself that because he is that. If it makes you feel better, Cody, I was the first to tell him about your um, your spectacularly stupid, goofy-ass dog. <laughs> They're just jealous because Pharaoh gets more attention than they do. Pharaoh had a t-shirt in AEW, which is always funny to me. <laughs> so you know, that is Cody with The Rock. It, it, it spoiled grapes because I'm sure that Pharaoh doesn't want to interact with Rock because he doesn't want to smell Rock shit. But that's just my viewpoint. So I have, so I have a problem, though. I have a problem. We're All right. To talk about Rock and Cody. Rock and Cody. Rock and Cody. Sal, and I know you hate to say this, what is the main event of Night 2 of WrestleMania? <laughs> Uh, yeah, Cody Roman. <laughs> exactly. That's so, the problem. So, can I add? Can I add to that really quick before Go before forward. Dad says anything? Go ahead. What about Bailey? Oh yeah, well, yeah, well, Bailey is doing her own thing. She was the main event thing right down this past week for yeah, that whole storyline. Yes, but she, but she's a she's a Rumble winner. She, I agree. I agree. With you know I mean, like, where's that storyline? My my opinion, and I actually have an opinion on this, and this is not just Bailey. I've been saying this for years. But since we had two Rumbles and we have two Nights of Mania, I've said this last year too, the Rumble winners should make event night one and night two. If Roman's going to be event night two, the Rumble winner faces Roman at night two. Mm -hmm. And then the Women's Royal Rumble winner should be the main event in night one. I've been saying that since we went to two nights. Right. Unless you have some exception to the rule, like, say, Stone Cold Steve Austin's return. 
That I understood being the main sure. event of night one a couple of years ago, but it's Stone Cold Steve Austin. I understood okay. that. And okay. even then, the tag team title being the main event last year, I thought that was pretty damn cool, but it could have you could have flip-flopped it and had Rhea versus Charlotte because Rhea won the Royal Rumble. Like you could have flip-flopped right. it and no one would have complained. But no, I'm with you, Sal, on that 100 percent Like I am with you. Why is Bailey in the background of all this as the Royal Rumble? Oh. Like I agree with you on that. So just to kind of put things in perspective. How you're hyping up the promos of Rocky and Cody, but Cody is facing Roman Knight too. Absolutely. So, so yeah. does though do these promos that both of them are cutting, doesn't that overshadow the main event for night two? That's a hundred percent what I was about to say. The hundred percent. Like, and now again, going to SmackDown this week, personally, going to SmackDown this week, Rocky is not advertised. Cody and Roman are advertised, and they're gonna have a confrontation. And after this whole promo that Cody cut, Cole Heyman came out and um, got on the ring apron. And by the way, Cody, remember a couple of weeks ago on Raw, Cole Heyman came out with the security team, the what, quote unquote New York City Police Department, quote unquote. Um, <laughs> and Cody said, no, don't get in the ring. I don't look in the ring. Cody changed his tune on this one and said, You're, you are a Hall of Famer, Paul Heyman. You have all rights to get in the ring with me if you want to. Like, well played. Well played. But Paul decided not to. But he had the option now. Like, Cody gave him the option this time. Right, right. But Paul got on the ring apron and told Cody, Roman will be on Friday night SmackDown, on SmackDown this week. But the only person in the bloodline that will be by his side will be me. And I'm not exactly a physical threat. <laughs> not having a physical threat. And the deal with Cody was nobody could come, nobody should be should come with you. So come to SmackDown by yourself. Roman will come without with only me, and we'll have a conversation in the ring. And I think that will be where we more concentrate on Ro- on Cody versus Roman. So they're going to reel it back in. Like, I get it. Yeah, they're going to reel things back in on SmackDown this week to actually, you know, concentrate on the actual main event of WrestleMania, <laughs> which is because Cody Roman. <laughs> that kind of makes sense because if you'd have Rock continue this, then you're still overshadowing that match between the two yeah and then on next week's show we will obviously talk about that because i do want to obviously we'll even though it's our final show and we'll have other things going on i will want to talk about my experience with smackdown because it's it's a big show like at the end of the day this is one of the biggest smackdowns i've been to in years like by far because (laughs) here's here's my issue and i don't know if anyone else has it is that you have brock we have brought rock into this and is, is intertwining himself in or interjecting himself into this thing. So my thing is, we all know what Rock has done in the past for WWE. And he's gone on to other vehicles. That's great. Everyone knows about The Rock. Fantastic. But my thing is, when you bring The Rock in, and with his popularity and everything, there is always going to be that cloud that's hanging over Roman going, Rock's getting more attention than you. Rock's getting this more than you. He's getting more than than you you think he is. So why don't you like kind of step inside with the Rock and kind of tell Rock, you know, slow your roll there, buddy. This is my show. This is my house. This is my match. It's not yours. It's not just you. It's us. And you're basically kind of like flapping your lips. So why don't you shut it and let me say something? In response, I do want to say something, and here's my issue, and it's all been doing predictions on how WrestleMania week is going to go, and we'll get into ours in a couple of weeks. Okay. That that Rock's going to turn on Roman, and we're going to get to Roman versus Rock at SummerSlam. Apparently, brother, apparently the movie studios are getting smart to The Rock, because Rock apparently has a movie starting right after Mania, and they, they put in his contract that he can't wrestle until after the filming is done. After Mania. Okay. If you put it in the contract, if you put it in the contract. Oh, wait. Repeat that? After Mania, Rock right. was a movie. I forgot what movie it is. But apparently mm-hmm. the movie studios are getting smart to Rock, knowing what he's actually paying, paying attention to The Rock. Unlike back in, like, the last time he did a run, he actually paying attention to him, saying, right. you can't wrestle a match while you're filming this movie. I mean, that's understandable, I guess. It makes so, like, sense so, because you don't like want him he, injured. He was supposed to wrestle in Saudi Arabia. He was supposed to have the next Saudi Arabia show. Rock was supposed to wrestle on that show, and he's no longer allowed to. Mm-hmm. 
So right. and it sounds like if they're doing Roman Rock, it'll have to be a SummerSlam at the earliest. Right. The Roman schedule and Rock's now movie schedule. The earliest. Well, they- yeah, because they don't want to. They don't want to jeopardize their their. I think projects. it's smart. No, I think it's actually yeah. smart. Remember what happened at WrestleMania 29, where Rock got hurt and he had the late Hercules filming because Rock yeah. got like it's smart. Right. Well, I'm not even come saying it's a bad thing for the movie studio. They think it's absolutely intelligent. But I'm just throwing it, it out. I heard that yesterday. So like, it's it's basically guaranteed insurance that I your smart. very smart your actor is not going to do something that's going to jeopardize his absolutely. Yeah, I was throwing it out there. Something that just got announced yesterday. That came out yesterday. So that they, that the movie studio they're actually starting to pay attention to what Rock is doing. So, because it, it, if it's part of the contract, it's in the clause, and he does something against it, then they can go after him for breach of contract. Absolutely, absolutely. Yep. So that's where we'll end things here. By the way, I want to throw something out. TNA just announced that, um, so TNA is running the um twenty three hundred arena this weekend. Okay. For um for a uh, for a for TV tapings, for TV tapings this weekend for the next like month of shows. And they just announced Nick Nemeth versus Alex Shelley. Holy oh, crap. crap. Yeah, they okay. just announced that match for this weekend. Like, holy shit. That's a huge match. For tel- no, hit- this is for TV. This is for an impact show. This is for impact. <laughs> for television. Uh, or anything. Like, wow. Man. Oh, like, okay. damn. Like, holy cow. That- <laughs> hold, hold for hold. Let's see who's yeah. going to so come they, on. They just announced that. Like, during the show, they announced that. Like, I'm just going to wait until we're done with the WWE that, talk and bring it up here. That <laughs> is going to be... A phenomenal match. Damn, we're good on TNA for that poll. Well done. Well done there. So, all right. On that being note, let's wrap things up here. Um, Dad, what are we closing the show with? Okay, before I even tell, okay, wait, I'm going right. to stop. Okay, before I even do this, I text Dad. Sal, mm-hmm. we've been doing wrestling themes the rest of media, for the rest of media month for the last six years. We've been doing the same thing for six years. I text Dad last night as I'm doing the run sheet, and I go and say, I need an outro, and he throws me a normal song. <laughs> I then respond back to him and I say, We need a wrestling closer. And he goes and says, Kingdom, Cody's the only can we stay away from the WrestleMania main event so we can open so we know we can save them for the rest of the day after show up the WrestleMania? Can we save them for that? This is going to have a last night of putting together the run sheet. So, like, there you go. Anyway, so what are we actually closing the show with that? Go. Hey, Jimmy Hart, the common man boogie, better known as the entrance music for. Dusty, the American Dream Rhodes. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So, Sal, All right. get out of here. Go. Uh, for more information on our show, including where you can find us on social media or tell us how bad our body order is on TikTok mm. or, or look or watch the show on YouTube, uh, among other things. Go to our website, theblakeshowshow.com, and we don't forget to tell us we smell and we will read it on the show. By the way, I want to make a note. I have multiple notes for clips on my phone right now. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to be fun for clips later. Um, yeah, say your thing. Hey, as always, it's been your pleasure. And if you happen to have a local independent wrestling organization where you live at, please patronize these people because these are the young men and women coming up in the world of professional wrestling sports entertainment. They want to show you what they can do as far as their moveset, their promos on the mic, their character gimmick, and they want to have that whole package presented to you because they want to see how you react so that gauges on how they basically proceed in their career to reach that brass ring to get into a major wrestling organization. As always, do it as a responsible adult. We all have to get along. We at One World. Let's just kind of make it a little bit nicer, okay? So please, just do that. By the way, so we always in public, of, in, in public, if you will. So we always oh, make we always make fun of dad for his spiels, but it's a whole different thing when he does the whole spiel with this merry music going on in the background. It's a whole different thing. <laughs> it's really funny to hear him doing this spiel with this music going on in the background. <laughs> so anyway, next week, as I said earlier, Wednesday, we will be live for our 500th show. Come join us for our 11th anniversary 500 show, a lunch lunch hour show for everybody to come join us and have some fun with us. Well, I will have a Zoom link up for everybody if you want to jump into the chat and have some fun with us. And we will have a live chat, go, a live um, live thing going on on Facebook. You can We're looking at you, Chris. Critch. Yeah, so come join us. It'll be a lot of fun. Plus, I'll talk about my, my SmackDown went and other stuff going on in the wrestling world. One, one question, Mr. Moderator. Are we going to have special guests? 
I'm working on things. If not, Got we'll it. do it for Mania Week, but for this week, I think we'll see what happens. He's reaching out to Critch as we speak. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm going to make sure I don't I want to make sure that I don't shower for a week. Chris, Chris we, we will we will find where you're at. We will send an elite commando unit, drag you out of that dungeon basement you live in, smell your pits, and then hold you lives- down with a bar of soap to wash up. He lives with his mother. It's not going to be that hard to find him. Yeah. in the background during all this. It's absolutely fucking hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> so all right let's get out of here we'll see everybody live on wednesday i'm blake i'm sal i'm mark and you're listening to the blake and sal show with mark have a hey, good day everybody love you guys please give us some feedback <laughs> besides critch <laughs> see ya see ya <laughs>